on in. It's always a bit harder to ask questions at this stage because you're honouring an entire career, not just an individual achievement. But looking back at what you've achieved, how bloody wonderful are you? <laughs> like, in, on your, your nomination, where, um, where they had to list the pioneering achievements of the nominee, your nominators listed 11 separate pioneering achievements. You've had a very successful career. Look, it's been a wonderful journey, uh, and I take this award very much not just as my award. I've had two magnificent uh, partners in crime, Glenn Marshall and Murray Norris. Um, we were fortunate to win the Translational Cancer Research of the Year Award two years ago, and uh, this really, it's been a team effort. I've got a wonderful team. We've got collaborators in the room, clinicians, scientists here around the world. Uh, it's 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 been a team effort, and it, this is on behalf of everyone. It's just wonderful. Take us right back. Can you remember the first moment where science or, or, or medicine or research, where the light went on inside you? Yeah, yeah, I do, actually. I had a wonderful science teacher at school. It was David Elyard, who's been involved in science yeah. communication for years. Um, uh, he was my science teacher, wow. and back in... This is rather terrifying, the late 1960s. Um, he got us doing projects on things like the structure of DNA and lasers and yeah. really fabulous things and said, go away and research them and come back. And I, as I'm known to do, wrote pages and pages and pages and pages. And this is pre-internet. Yeah, You're putting this go on Google and so on. So. Yeah, no, I, I just found it fascinating and I thought this is what I would love to do and I never looked back. And because you were the first postdoctoral scientist at the Children's Cancer Institute, how important was that for you and how important is that sort of position and, and, and security being given to someone at a, at a young stage in their, their research career? Uh, that, that was a fantastic opportunity. I'd um, actually done my undergraduate training in clinical psychology. I'd transferred to medical research for my PhD and this was my first job. And the director of research at the time was Bernard Stewart, who I bet is here somewhere. Uh, gave me a absolute freedom, actually, to... Uh, it was a new children's cancer research facility, and I chose an area, drug resistance in kids, that I thought was terribly important, and I'd actually just done a postdoc in Israel, and I'd learned the new technique then of DNA gene transfer, mm -hmm. and I thought, I'll come back and I'll apply that here, and I was just able to do what I wanted to do. It was a wonderful opportunity. Because what's amazing about your work is you haven't just identified potential target genes, you've also created the drug discovery program to make the drugs to target those drugs. Two very different strands, two very different <laughs> skill sets to have there. And now some of that stuff you've been doing with kids' cancers seems to have application in adult cancers as well. Yeah, look, that's really important for us. The, the drug companies traditionally uh, have had no interest in making drugs for children's cancer because th there's no money in it. You can't get a big blockbuster drug. So you need to have academic centres that are discovering new drugs. And so that's what we've worked on at the Institute, which is wonderful. Um, it's, that opportunity has been really marvellous to be able to, to do that, to make to make new drugs and then actually to be able to apply that in the clinic and make a difference to kids. So we've been very fortunate on that journey. We media types sometimes trivialise things by calling everything a breakthrough or a revolutionary breakthrough, but, but you have, have you had the occasional eureka moment where you've just looked at something and gone, wow, that, that changes everything? Uh, well, yes, there have been... There's, there's a new drug that we're working on at the moment that's uh, been developed by our collaborators in the United States and we discussed it with them and thought that it might have application for children's cancer and we tried it in our models and the tumours just melted. Um, refractory tumours uh, that we had never been able to, you know, we'd slowed the growth of them and they literally just dissolved. And we've worked with the team on what the mechanism of that is. And when we have presented the results in the US, they've said, right, let's take it straight to clinical trial. So that is actually going to open, uh, become a trial in the United States. It's not just with neuroblastoma, but with all refractory childhood yeah. cancers. Um, and so when you see that sort of thing happen, it's 
it, it's very exciting because you, you hope that you'll actually be able to change outcomes as we have already with, with some of our work in leukaemia. Is there anything else you'd like to say as the Premier's outstanding cancer researcher for 2014? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm enormously proud, very excited, very excited that children's cancer research, which is such a small part of the cancer research community overall, is, is honoured and actually the other awards from the Kids Cancer mm. Alliance tonight. It's it's extremely exciting. I'm, I'm thrilled. Please give a round of applause. Professor Michelle Haber. Well done, Michelle. Much deserved. Congratulations. Well done.